Today, I'm gonna make your reverse dive pike better in less than 15 minutes. We're gonna go over 301B from beginner all the way to advanced and talk about what's changing throughout a diver's journey to get to the expert level. I make these videos because I wish I had something like this when I was starting my diving career and I want you to be better off. So if you like this content, hit subscribe and let's get to it. This first video is a little blurry, but it's worth the watch because it goes through slow motion and it's a very basic beginner level reverse dive. The first thing we need to go over is the hurdle. As she walks down, her arms are swinging wide into that hurdle step and the knee and foot go flying forward. Rather than driving up, they go forward and out towards the end of the board. Ideally, you wanna step down directly below your hips so you have a straight line and then drive down into the board so you can jump higher. Her arms never pause at the top the arm circles are continuous therefore she never really gets a balance point throughout the hurdle and then because she was pushing forward with the knee and not driving up you can see as she leaves the board her hips move forward and her feet and legs get caught behind her so she has to break at the knees and then try and bring the legs up but you see she has that bend in her legs for a little bit too long she does a great job bringing them up and her toe points great but the out has another issue here so after she touches and she goes to slide out, she takes her hands off of her body and then kind of bends her arms and keeps her hands at her stomach to grab and then brings them overhead. You want to slide out of the dive as you'll see later on from more advanced divers and you want to either come out laterally or closer to your body and not swing your arms like that. See so how her arms are going out very far away from her body. There isn't really any save or entry work here but that's a great start and let's move on to the next diver. So the second diver does a really good job walking down the board and driving up into the air. So she's jumping pretty well but take a look at her arms right here at the top of the press her arms are at about 11 o'clock and you want your arms to be straight up above your head so that you can literally draw a straight line from your hands down to your toes or your ankles that's super important because judges love to see clean lines in diving if you're stopping at 11 o'clock this is such an easy fix to get those extra little points that the little attention to detail that can give you a leg up on your competition anyways she drives her knee up well but she can put down her leg a lot faster and really snap out of that to show off the height as I was talking about before. Arm circle is okay and at this stage in a diver's career there's a lack of core strength and core stability that needs to be developed through core exercises like hanging pike ups or just normal pike ups, planks, anything that can really engage the hip flexors as well because that's super important in creating fast connections into pike or tuck when you're going for harder dives. You can see her hips are open as she comes off the board and therefore her legs come up a little bit on the slow side. They don't really pop up fast and dynamic. They're a little bit slow and she's open in the pike, meaning she doesn't really close the legs into her chest. I know it's hard to see because the light is in the background, but you can still tell that her legs and head are kind of far apart. Closing that gap will become important and then the out is another issue that she has. Just like I was talking about before with the core strength on the takeoff, it's also important important to engage your core on the slide out because you want to stop hollow and not go archy immediately. You want to stop right about there and then hold that in your core while the dive continues to rotate. Instead, she kind of just lets her legs drop and it goes short because of that. This is another super common flaw in the reverse dive because a lot of people are afraid to stay on top of the board and keep their heels down on the takeoff and you end up going through the knees. You might hear that from a coach if you go out too far on a reverse that you're going through the knees. You can see on his takeoff that huge bend from his ankles to knees to hips all the way through there it's sliding forward and he has to then fix it as he's leaving the board and his legs aren't straight until right about there look at all the distance that he didn't have straight legs and in real time that looks off you can tell that it's bent and that it's sliding out the way to fix that is right here on the takeoff first of all he needs to get his arms through a little bit quicker so his hands are pointing towards 12 o'clock a little bit earlier and he has to sit back a little bit more and keep his weight over his heels more he's 
he's loading up the board and he's on his toes too much, which means his weight is going to be pushed out. If he keeps his weight back on his heels, it's going to feel like he's stuck in the air the first time he does it, or it might even feel like he's going to hit the board. Look how far out he is. If he stays on his heels a little bit more, he's got another four feet to move in. So he's very safe if he keeps his weight back a little bit more. The pike is okay. He gets to a pretty good point. He is touching his toes. He can get his chest a little bit closer to his legs. And the press out is okay, but he lifts his arms off of his legs rather than keeping his arms sliding along his body. And then he does keep his arms and his hands closer as he's grabbing. The main issue with this dive is really the balance and timing on the board and just not keeping his weight back far enough. And this can be a very scary thing to fix as anybody goes through their diving journey. But just trust your coach and know that you have some space to move in and you can really experiment with staying on top of the board a little bit more. This next person does a really good job on a lot of aspects of this dive. One other thing I want to bring up that's important for reverse reverses in general, and that I will bring up a lot more with reverse one and a half tuck, is the idea that you need to keep your eyes down or your head in a more neutral position on the takeoff. You might not see it on reverse dives as much, but when you see people doing reverse one and a halves and their head goes back on the takeoff, it's a very bad habit to get into. So practicing keeping your eyes down on the water in front of you is super important. And this person does a really good job of doing that. We don't see the full hurdle, but we can see that her arms are a little wide at the beginning of this. Keeping straight arms no matter what is super important and keeping your arms straight on the arm circle is also very important. You can see she has a bend in her arms. That's taking away a lot of power and potential height that she could have if she keeps her arms straight. She pops off of the board very well. Her legs go straight pretty quickly. Her feet are a little bit flat, but that's okay for now. Look at the depth of this pike position, how her forehead is practically against her shins. And that's a real pike position right there. The slide out is also a little bit bit off you want to separate the slide from the grab at this stage in a diving career you're going to see a lot of people putting those two stages together they're grabbing and sliding at the same time on the entry because they're not jumping as high as they will eventually but separating the out from the grab is super important she pulls a little bit too hard so she goes a little archy there i was gonna say she saves it well but you can see underwater that she kind of goes too deep it doesn't really look like she's knee saving so that might be a bit of luck on the the entry. I don't know. It's hard to tell. All right. So we've got a nice synchro dive. Let's look at the person closest to us for this because it's hard to see sometimes the person behind. The hurdle is a little funky. He's got that weird bend in his knee. I would caution against that. It's a little distracting. The line is okay. You can see his hands are actually a little bit at 11 o'clock as well. His shoulder flexibility might be lacking and he can get his hands up a little bit higher, more towards 12 o'clock. As he comes through, the takeoff is pretty good. But again, you you see that lack of flexibility in the shoulders and you really want to be able to let the hands go back past the head a little bit more. He drives up very well. He jumps very high. He touches his toes and then slides out. You can see this is the first person that's really slid out of a dive and separated the out from the grab and reach. He does have a strange curve in his back and I think that's just his body, his genetics, but he slides out well and that's a pretty solid line right there. I think he could hold that a little bit longer before reaching back because of how high he is. Think about how much time he has. He's still way above the board. He starts to grab early, but his chin is down. You you can see as he's sliding out and reaching how much of his chin and face is pointing inward. He can start to look over his eyebrows a little bit earlier. And because of that, because of that chin in and not holding that line a little bit longer, he's going to slide over. And that's exactly what happens. Let's take a look at the next person. And this is a really, really solid reverse dive. This is the first example of somebody actually getting a strong takeoff. And I want to explain the difference here between this person's takeoff and one of the previous takeoffs. First of all, look at the position of the arms in relation to the head and the body. The arms are behind the ears and the body is still straight. A lot of people think that swinging the arms past the head will then translate into more rotation, but when you have strong enough core, you can maintain that straight position off the board and let the arms drive back without creating more rotation. She pops her feet up very well. And look at this, at the peak of the dive, she's very deep in the pike position and then she slides 
slides out and looks at her toes and then reaches for the water and absolutely destroys the entry. Now we've seen a great example of the arm swing being straight arms and powerful and the proper hip positioning on the takeoff. And we'll see some professional divers here from London 2012 in the last two examples because they do really, really solid job of controlling the takeoff and the flight and the entry. As they come through, you can see she steps right to the end of the board, which is great. The arms come through and swing pretty straight, slight bend in the arms, but they get past the head and look again. This is the stack we talk about a lot is these ankles, hips, and head all in alignment. It's a straight line that can be drawn there. It's not angled out and it's not falling back too much either. When you load the board, thinking about contracting your core and really maintaining one hip position is super important. If your core is weak, the board will be able to change your hip position as you leave. So contracting your core on the drive up is so important. I cannot overstate that enough. Her legs drive up beautifully, touches at the top of the dive and slides out. Look at this slide where her arms and hands stay along her body. She actually reaches back a little early. I think she can hold this position a little bit longer to show that off. And she gets a little bit of an arch because her head is back a little bit too far. But other than that, she nails the entry, especially for three meter, that's great. Now let's take a look at a different angle of this because we can really see the entry. To get clean entries as you're closing, you really want to create a tight seal around your head. We've talked about this in other videos, but as you're going in the water, you need to swim the arms laterally and for back and reverse entries, you actually need to bring your head up. So as you go in, depending on the rotation strength, if you need to knee save harder, you're going to look up as if you're tilting your head backwards while simultaneously pulling the hamstrings to keep your toes straight above the water. But you can see here, she does a great job. She doesn't need to knee save hard because she's going in very straight, but she still swims just as hard as any other dive. As she goes in, the arms slide apart and you see air bubbles getting pushed out to the side. She has a little bit of splash come up, but it's minimal. All right, last but not least, we've got Team China here. We will look at the person in front as usual. Super strong hurdle. As he comes in for this hurdle step, look how they drive down into the board. They push it down as much as they can before coming up. It's very impressive to see that. Try and emulate that and put that into your own dives. It's only going to improve your height and your strength off the board too. So anyways, driving up, the knee drive is good. His foot is a little bit behind the planted leg. We like to keep the foot in front a little bit more. Arm position is good. So look at this line here. It's pretty straight. I would say his hands are a little bit in front. If he got his hands up a little bit higher towards 12 o'clock, that line would be a little bit better, but it's very good. He gets all the way to the end. And same thing here. Look at how he stacked ankles, hips, and head. His hands are behind his ears, which is where a lot of the power comes from. And it allows the legs to pop up strong into this super tight pike. His hands are over his feet. It's beautiful how deep he can get into this pike position. And he slides out. Again, hands a little bit far away, but it's because of how powerful the slide out is and how fast it is. And then take a look. He pauses there for a moment and then his hands come out laterally for the close. He grabs his hands and he knee saves and swims. Check out this angle we got underwater. This is another great way of showing the swim. He's grabbed here and he's tight squeeze. And as soon as his hands hit, they separate. You can see they're already separating and pushing air out to the side. And as he comes in, you can see the knees bending. That's a textbook knee save right there there. So that's reverse dive pike. There's a lot of things that you'll learn on this journey. Some of it comes down to just your hurdle getting better over time. And then it comes down to comfort of driving up and not pushing out on the takeoff, keeping the distance at a safe but aesthetically pleasing distance as well. After that, it becomes about the proper drive up core strength and press out and not conflating the out with the reach and grab, trying to separate the two by sliding out and then looking back and reaching for the entry and over time your entries are going to get better too we'll do a video on entries eventually but for now i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you on the next one